Today we're going to go over arterial line uh, waveform interpretation and management of an arterial line in transport. So arterial lines are a form of invasive blood pressure monitoring uh, that's used for critically ill or injured patients. Um, they're typically inserted in the emergency department or the intensive care unit and they allow for the uh, precise blood pressure uh, measurement and trending uh, as well as the titration of therapies. Um, it's indicated for use in patients that are receiving vasoactive infusions, as well as uh, patients requiring frequent um, arterial blood gas sampling, uh, or those with fluctuating and unstable blood pressures. Uh, arterial lines are not routinely used in the pre-hospital setting. Uh, however, uh, critical care or treatment paramedics should at least be familiar with their use uh, in the instance of them having to transfer patients in an interfacility um, movement. So arterial lines are often inserted into either the, the radial, uh, brachial, femoral or dorsalis pedis uh, arteries. However, the radial artery is most often used due to ease of uh, access and, um, and use. Uh, the catheter itself is connected to a fluid field uh, pressure transducer system, uh, which incorporates a flush as well. And that continuously infuses 0.9% uh, uh, sodium chloride solution sometimes with, uh, some, sometimes heparinized uh, under pressure to maintain uh, patency of the catheter and uh, to prevent uh, any coagulation. Uh, the attra attached transducer, which is normally uh, uh, positioned at the height of the right atrium, uh, is, uh, converts uh, the pressure that it detects into a waveform, uh, as well as a uh, numerical value, which is displayed on the monitor. So we'll just touch over managing an arterial line. So prior to transport, we need to inspect and identify where the arterial line is and make sure that it's in a position that's easily observed. So it's above sheets and blankets. Uh, and we also need to inspect and um, confirm that there's no uh, obvious signs of infection. Uh, so symptoms like erythema, edema, heat, pain, or discharge around the insertion site can be observed if uh, an infection is present. We obviously need to ensure that the arterial line is functioning and we need to ensure that it's appropriately secured uh, with transparent dressings that allow you to site the insertion site, but also make sure that it's, it's very secure. Uh, we also need to make sure that the arterial line itself, as well as its connected paraphernalia, is um, very clearly marked with arterial line labels so that uh, patient, uh, clinicians don't get confused as to what line is going where. During transport or ongoing care, we always uh, the number one priority would be to maintain security of the arterial line to prevent accidental removal of the device during movement. Obviously most of the time these patients would be you know, sedentary in the, in the intensive care unit when we're moving them as uh, pre-hospital or inter-facility transfers, there's obviously an increased risk of accidental removal. The radial approach, if that's where the um, art line is inserted, um, uh, or the brachial approach um, mean that the arm that the uh, art line is inserted into must be maintained in an extended position in order to uh, maintain accurate uh, uh, readings and also to uh, make sure that the patency of the line is kept. Um, a pressure bag is actually used to uh, continue the infusion of, of sodium chloride through the art line and that bag must be inflated to a pressure of about 300 millimetres of mercury or as indicated on the pressure bag itself. And that, that infuses about three to five millilitres uh, every hour. In the event that you disconnected uh, the transducer or monitoring equipment from the art line, or you have been troubleshooting the line, um, you must also re-zero uh, the transducer each time that this occurs in order to maintain uh, an accurate uh, reading. And it's also important to note that the art line is not uh, to be used as a method of drug administration. Uh, obviously, it's going directly into an artery, not the venous system. So let's have a look at uh, the waveform. If we draw a QRS complex, we've got our P wave, we've got, sorry, if we draw an ECG, we've got our P wave, we've got our QRS complex, and we've got a T wave uh, through there. Um, the waveform corresponds with the ECG. So we have uh, the large uptick is the uh, systolic um, uh, pressure increasing at its peak that is the site of the systolic pressure peak and systolic pressure runoff we then have 
a, a notch, which is called a dichronic notch, that then uh, trends down with it as well. The dichronic notch is where the aortic valve closes, and you then have the diastolic pressure runoff back down to baseline. So the peak systolic pressure should correspond but offset by a couple of milliseconds from the QRS complex, which is obviously indicative of um, ventricular uh, systole. The, uh, there are a number of um, considerations uh, for managing an art line. Uh, obviously, the insertion of the art line itself is a high-risk procedure. It's high-risk for both infection and for hemorrhage. Um, so therefore, that is why it's really important that we maintain um, a close eye on the outline, that we keep an eye on signs of infection, and, and that the accidental removal can result in catastrophic hemorrhage. Uh, and therefore, and that would need to be managed like any other arterial bleed with direct pressure, uh, or even a tourniquet, I suppose, should uh, that not, su uh, not suffice. Um, anytime you're interacting with the outline, strict aseptic infection control technique should be uh, maintained. And, and that also includes dealing with its paraphernalia. Um, due to the increased risk of infection and the uh, risk of bleeding, uh, there is always uh, essentially the reinsertion of uh, an art line, whilst not done by us, but ultimately uh, our lack of attention to it can cause the art line to be dislodged, and reinsertion is always undesirable due to those risks. So, as we mentioned before, the arterial line is only for the collection of data. Uh, and for monitoring, and it doesn't provide an access point for medication administration. If you are noticing unexpected abnormalities with either the waveform or the numbers that it's providing uh, in terms of the blood pressure, uh, and they appear to be either un, uh, unexpected or at least inconsistent with the rest of the patient's presentation, you should troubleshoot the art line itself first before you assume that they're correct and make treatment decisions based upon that. Any issues that you have with the art line should be uh, communicated with the sending or receiving facility um, at the earliest convenience. And obviously you can confirm the accuracy of the blood pressure reading with a non-invasive blood pressure if required.